So unlike a lot of my other MCU Disney Plus reviews, which I would get to really late, I tried getting to this one as quickly as I could. In fact, I tried to make sure this didn't take many moons. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about the newest Marvel Disney Plus series, Moon Knight. Before we begin, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on the series were, if you already saw it, or if you were planning on seeing it, and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my content out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more movie and TV related content like Marvel reviews on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Moon Knight. This stars Oscar Isaac as Stephen Grant, who discovers he's been granted powers of an Egyptian moon god, but he soon finds out that these newfound powers can be both a blessing and a curse to his troubled life. So, as I've done previously with my reviews of other TV series, especially all the Marvel shows, this will get into spoilers. So, if you haven't seen Moon Knight by now and you wish to know nothing, this is your spoiler warning. Go watch the show, then come back to this. But, now that you've been warned, here we go. This is created by Jeremy Slater, who wrote the first and last episodes, and most of the series was directed by Mohamed Diab, other than two episodes by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. And it's the introduction of a brand new hero to the MCU, with this having the distinction of being a rare project for this franchise these days that doesn't quite rely on you having to see every single other movie or show in order to fully understand what's going on here. In fact, you don't need to watch anything before seeing this. While this might contain Easter eggs and subtle references to other Marvel properties, you can watch this having not seen anything else related to the MCU before this. Which is something I know some audiences who might not be diehard fans of this universe have been noting as a criticism, which I can understand. As much as I like the MCU as a whole, in these last few years, they have been reaching a point where you need to know a lot of what was going on in about 20 or so other shows and movies in order to understand whatever the newest installment is, almost like an ongoing comic book series. It's not as often now where Marvel puts out a new movie or show that feels more standalone, or at least feels quite as reliant on everything else in the grand scheme of things. So with this being the rare exception, it was a nice breath of fresh air, and right out of the gate, this was definitely one of the more intriguing first episodes of these Disney Plus shows. I'd say with these series, they have been pretty hit and miss in terms of hooking you in with something really fascinating right off the bat. WandaVision and Hawkeye were two of the strongest for me, while the other shows didn't quite convey that sense of urgency, nor was there really that interesting hook right out of the gate. I know some people might say Loki is in the former category, but I thought it was just a fine opening to be honest. But this started off in a way that was certainly different than what you normally get in the MCU, because you have Steven, who's this timid gift shop worker, and he experiences all these blackouts and visions, and through most of the first episode, not only is he completely unaware of what's going on with him, but so are we as the audience. We'll see things through his point of view, where one minute Steven is being chased, and then he blacks out, and he's on a bus, or then he's falling, or whatever it may be. And we, along with him, don't know how he got to where he is, and it established a surrealist tone that we normally don't get to see all that often within the MCU, which, again, is refreshing. As I said, I like the MCU, but it's well known that this universe is known for having a lot of broad accessibility to it. As in heroes who weren't really all that well known prior to their MCU debut, these stories are still told in a way where it doesn't feel alienating or feel so in the dark for a good chunk of the project. But here, we start things off with an episode centered around this mystery behind a character who we don't know much about. We're only given so much of an introduction to Steven before getting thrown right into things with him. And you're trying to make sense of it all and put the pieces of this very strange puzzle together with him, which was a nice change of pace. The first episode moves at a brisk enough speed, and before you know it, it ends with him in the Moon Knight costume, taking on an alternate personality, soon revealed to be Mark Spectre, and he uses these superpowers he didn't know he had in order to save himself from getting killed. And I thought that was a solid introduction to this character. And also in this episode, we get introduced to our series villain, Arthur Harrow, played by Ethan Hawke, who's this mysterious cult leader who's looking for a scarab that Steven unknowingly has in his possession, and who we quickly find out is the servant of an Egyptian god named Amit, who he's looking to release from imprisonment. And I will say, before going any further about the rest of the episodes, that both Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke themselves were great here. I do have more on their respective characterizations that I want to get into, but in terms of just their performances, 
They both give it their all, and these are two actors who I was very excited to see brought into the MCU. Like, Oscar Isaac is a very charismatic actor, and he's always had great leading man energy about him, and he especially brings out that charisma when he's Mark, and we'll get more into Steven in a moment. But Ethan Hawke is someone I've always found to be very underrated, but I think he's able to bring a lot of gravitas to anything he's in, and I think he's someone who's gotten even better over time. And as the series antagonist, he also knows how to bring about that charismatic energy, though he channels it into a much more sinister persona that makes him an eerie presence. And the one element I found to be strongest about this series as a whole are all the performances. Another of the big standouts in the supporting roles is Mae Callumway as a woman named Layla who turns out to be Mark's wife, but first encounters him as Steven, who obviously doesn't recognize who she is. But she's someone who knows how to take charge of a situation, having an active role in Mark and Steven's journey, and she gets a few solid action scenes herself, which I found to be some of the more satisfying moments in the show. Show, so I found her to be very endearing. Plus, you have F. Murray Abraham providing the voice work for the Egyptian god Khonshu, whose powers Mark and Stephen channel when they are Moon Knight. And while his dialogue is mostly made up of fairly standard lines of this godly being proclaiming who he is and trying to serve as a guide for our protagonist, and it's nothing I necessarily call memorable, I will say F. Murray Abraham's voice work itself was great. So he's certainly another welcome addition to the cast here. And as we get further into the lore of these Egyptian gods and what Stephen and Mark were up to prior to the events of the series, there were some cool, interesting concepts brought up here, mostly due to some of the visual spectacle that was on display. I like the costumes for both Moon Knight as well as Mr. Knight, which is the alias Stephen uses. I liked whenever we got an in-depth look into the world of the gods, as well as this alternate reality we explore in the later episodes. All the CGI looked very polished, and there were a lot of moments that tapped into that surrealist imagery that were shot really well. But for me, as cool as it all looked, and as great as the cast were, I didn't find this series as a whole to be all that captivating, and it never really built on the momentum from the first episode. I know this is going to be a bit of a hot take, as I know some people really do love this series and are calling it the best of the Marvel Disney Plus shows, but if anything, while I didn't dislike this as a whole, it's easily one of the weakest Disney Plus shows in my opinion. For one thing, I found this series to be a little repetitive, while rarely bringing out any true emotional stakes or exploring our main character's state of mind. For the next bunch of episodes, it was Steven and Mark just fighting for control over this body, getting help from Layla, while having an encounter with Harrow, and then repeat, with the only thing changing is the setting, from London to Egypt to this supernatural world that we'll get to later on in the series, which I do want to touch upon really quickly. Going into the show, this was being hyped up by a lot of people who got to see the first four episodes, how the fourth episode was going to be one of the most mind-blowing things that I've ever seen in my life, ever. And it was fine. I mean, it was certainly intriguing compared to what we've gotten so far, and it did set things up for a potentially interesting final two episodes, but as far as like my mind being blown or something... That really didn't happen. So, in the final few moments of the fourth episode, we see Mark, after being shot by Harrow, wake up in a psychiatric hospital with Harrow as his supposed therapist. And we actually see him encounter Stephen in a separate body, and they have all these surreal encounters, like seeing a tomb in one room and a hippo-headed goddess in another, and we don't know what's going on, as it's a complete change of pace from everything else we've seen in the show thus far. And that's all fine. I like that we got this change of environment, but... I don't know about mind-blowing. I mean, we're talking about a series that involves a guy with two personalities that experiences blackouts and has powers from ancient Egyptian gods, and it seemed kind of obvious that we'd eventually get a moment in the show that went a little further into its more supernatural and surrealist element. In this case, us finding out in the next episode, it's actually the afterlife. But even if it wasn't that exactly, I figured we'd get a vision or a moment where we're literally just inside a character's head or something. I mean, I don't know, it could just be me. It was a fine moment, but it really wasn't anything mind-blowing. It seemed inevitable that we would get a moment like this, given the feel of disorientation this show is built upon in its first episode. So, this is why I always try going into things with tempered expectations, because this really didn't live up to the hype that was being built around it. But beyond that, with all these surreal moments and cool imagery and whatever else that was thrown our way, rarely did I feel we actually explore any sort of emotional depth between Mark and Steven. Now, we do eventually see that in the fifth episode, in which we explore how both Steven and Mark inhabited the same body, which turns out to be that Mark created Steven in his head to help cope with his mother's abuse, which I thought was a really poignant storyline. But before that, 
every other episode didn't have that much nuance in them, so my emotional investment only went so far. I mean, we do get a lot of exposition throughout each episode, detailing the lore behind these gods like Kanshu and Amit, and it's in between some of those well-done action scenes that I mentioned, but it just needed a little something more to not make these moments feel so hollow. And I think what didn't help either is that, I wasn't exactly the biggest fan of Steven's character. I mean, I get the point was that he was timid and he just wants to live a normal life and he doesn't understand what's happened to him. And in that way, he is relatable. But I found the way he's presented here to just come off as nothing but whiny. Like, I understand he's supposed to be scared and he just wants control of his body back. But the way his dialogue's written, it never felt all that compelling, if I had to be honest. These moments of Mark and Steven fighting for control felt like borderline amusing bickering rather than a truly emotional storyline about someone fearing they're losing their mind. And not that I don't find some of these bits to be funny. Like I said, I'm all for jokes in superhero shows and movies thrown in there to cut the tension. But after a while, it all felt so one note. And we get six episodes of this, so... I wanted something a little more there. And I mean, Oscar Isaac does what he can here, but I found it to only go so far. Now, for some, maybe you don't have as much of an issue with this. Some might like both Mark and Steven equally, so maybe you'll find that fight for control between them to be a little more compelling. But for me, while I thought Mark was an intriguing character, Steven, on the other hand, didn't really do much for me. I think had they tried exploring different avenues with him, and it felt like there was more to his personality than just whatever we got here, then maybe I'd feel differently. On top of that, I also wasn't the biggest fan of Harrow's characterization. Like I said, Ethan Hawke himself was great, and his introduction in the first episode set the stage for quite possibly one of the most intriguing MCU villains, but I found him also to be very one-note. He got the eerie but oddly charismatic persona down that I mentioned earlier, but his general characterization felt like nothing more than just your typical baddie who wanted power and to take over the world and all that, and it's all stuff that we've seen before. Every time we see him, he's trying to find a way to obtain this power, and that's about all there is to him. Despite being the series antagonist, he felt like background noise. So as much as Ethan Hawke tries to add this menacing presence to the show, because of the pretty bland writing for the character, it only went so far for me. And some might say the conflict was really more about the internal conflict between Mark and Steven and not just a typical good versus evil storyline. And that's fine. I think that's actually more interesting. But that still doesn't excuse the poor writing for someone who's going to be our main antagonist. Like, we're supposed to feel the stakes increase every time we see this character, and that just didn't happen for me. On top of the fact that I found one of our protagonist personalities to be kind of grating. So, overall, it wasn't a great mix. But, all that being said, despite it lacking in compelling character moments, it did still at least have some fun action. So, that helped a little. But while I'm normally a proponent of films that can sometimes not be anything more than mindless action scenes, when it comes to shows, you need a little more of a hook and you need to feel like some sort of progress is actually being made in terms of either story or characters so that it makes you look forward to each successive episode. And because of just how repetitive it all felt, I didn't quite get that from this. I think where the problem lies with this particular show is that it either needed to go in one of two different directions. It either needed to be a movie where it cut to the chase a little quicker in the material that made up the middle episodes so that you get to the emotional punch of the fifth episode quicker, or this should have been a few episodes longer so that it had a little more time to explore these characters and that way it made the bigger action moments feel a little more earned and higher in stakes. Like when you get to that fifth episode and explore how Steven came to be and we explore how Mark created that persona and we actually get some emotional death, it made for a nice payoff. But we also just didn't need three episodes of one note bickering between the two to get to that point. Like, if we got this in movie form, you could have condensed that repetitive bickering from episode two through four, and then we get that emotional gut punch from episode five much quicker, and it would have had even more of an impact, in my opinion. But then again, even once we started making some progress here with that fifth episode, the show once again quickly loses its momentum in the sixth and final episode, where it becomes a pretty standard Marvel CGI heavy beat-em-up that's almost totally void of the layered depth it just previously explored. All that great character work we were looking for and finally got, time to abandon it, and we go back to more of the same as what we got before that. And as much as I like the MCU in general, this is a problem they can have from time to time. I'd say two of the most notable examples recently are in Black Widow and Shang-Chi, which, up until their third acts, had a solid enough balance of action and emotional character development. Shang-Chi especially, but once we get to the final battle, 
they'll drop any sense of nuance they have and just go all in on the mindless and not all that creative looking CGI. And not only did it cause those films to lose momentum, but it can take you out of the moment. And with this show, I also felt taken out of the moment in that final episode because of that. Like I said, I'm not exactly against mindless entertainment, but with this being something you're meant to take a little more seriously, I was hoping for something more emotionally impactful, especially for a final episode. But the most frustrating thing about the finale isn't even that it just relies on spectacle and has little emotional impact, but it's that it doesn't even fully commit to all that. It felt kind of like a cop-out ending where you have this showdown between Mark slash Steven and Harrow and things aren't looking good for them and Harrow overpowers them, but then all of a sudden they black out and wake up with Harrow defeated. Like we don't actually see anything, yet then of course it gets played up as this huge deal that they just got this newfound strength and we're supposed to wonder how. And not only would it have at least been nice to actually see things play out in an attempt to get some sort of emotional satisfaction, but the mystery they tried playing up felt pretty obvious that there was a third personality hidden in there all this time. Keep in mind, this is how it got explained why Steven was blacking out as often as he was in the first episode, because it was ultimately revealed to be the work of Mark. So of course, if both of them are now blacked out, it's obvious that there's a third personality there. And sure enough, that winds up being the case in the mid credit scene where it's revealed that there is a third personality named Jake Lockley, who's considerably more ruthless than either Mark or Steven, and he immediately executes Harrow upon getting in range of him. Now, I mean, this was a cool moment, but at the same time, the way it's presented here in relation to the ridiculous blackout moment and Harrow suddenly being defeated earlier on and then it's played up as a big mystery, it just felt like really clunky writing. And I just wish we had more time to explore all that in a much more intriguing way. Like, if anything, I wish we cut some of the repetitive stuff from the middle episodes out and gave us the reveal of Lockley earlier on. So that way, through the remaining few episodes, we could get a possibly more nuanced exploration of our lead state of mind. And that might have made for something even more emotional. Because you have Mark and Steven who, despite butting heads, do try working together, but they just bicker a lot. And like I said, that only goes so far from an emotional standpoint. However, Lockley seems like a much more sinister personality, and he's more willing to work with Kanchu as opposed to the other two who wanted to be done with Kanchu by the end of the show. So with a personality whose interests seem to be aligned considerably different from the other two we've been following, I think that would have made for much more intriguing inner turmoil for this character, and then maybe that would have propelled this show to greatness. Now, I'm sure that will be one of the primary focuses of this character's next appearance, whether it be a team-up movie or a solo movie, because right now there aren't any plans for a season two of the show. But for this outing, because we didn't get to explore quite as much of that inner conflict, at least not in a particularly compelling way, it only amounted to something that was just all right to me. While Moon Knight starts off as intriguing, giving us this air of mystery and feel of disorientation in the first episode, it rarely ever built upon that momentum from there. While Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke were both great, and there were some cool enough moments of action, rarely did it feel like there was any sense of emotional depth or nuance, instead opting to take on a very repetitive structure for most of its six episode run. Things pick up in a very compelling fifth episode, only to then dip back down in quality with an incredibly underwhelming finale. It had some cool surrealist moments, and for fans of the MCU, obviously you don't want to miss this, but it's definitely one of the weaker entries in this franchise franchise, and it just only amounted to an okay time. Moon Knight gets a 6.5 out of 10. So let me know, did you see Moon Knight, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Is this one of your favorite MCU shows? Is it one of your least favorite? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and share it, and for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone, and keep having fun with film and TV.